Welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen. I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach. Today we're talking about carbohydrates and we are talking specifically about the 13 worst carbohydrates for weight loss and why. So if you're excited, give this video a big, huge thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed. Your bell notification is turned on because I upload new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Don't forget to check out the description box down below where you will find nutrition coaching. I do offer personalized to you macros and calories. Highly recommend. This is how myself have lost and maintained a 140 pound weight loss as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you would like to talk with me directly or need a little bit of accountability. So let's jump right into the 13 unhealthiest carbohydrates and why. When you hear the word carbs, you may immediately think of things like bread, pasta, chips, cookies. Yes, those are carbohydrates, but those aren't all of the carbohydrates out there. And before we talk about unhealthy carbs, let's talk about carbs in general. Carbs are ne a necessity for a healthy body, for a well-balanced diet, and for a healthy lifestyle. We never restrict or eliminate any foods here, including carbohydrates. No carbs are or bad, there are just some carbs that are better than others. We want to choose the best carbs for weight loss. We want to choose the carbs that benefit our goals. Now, of course, we can eat some of those fun carbs like cookies, cakes, and candies, but we really want to focus 80 to 90% of our carbs on good, healthy, whole carbs. And then another 10 or 20% can be some of the carbs on today's list. Again, no food is bad or good and no carb is bad or good. When we're choosing carbs, we really want to look for carbs without a lot of added sugar and we want to choose carbs that have some fiber and or protein. That's going to make them a slower digesting carb. They won't affect our blood sugar as much and they're just a healthier option. Again, 80% those good carbs, 20% the fun carbs or the carbs on today's list. Speaking of today's list, let's jump into number one, and that is going to be jellies and jams. Really jams and jellies, especially in the jarred form, the ones you buy at your local grocery store, are really just sugar. Those jams have so much added sugar, up to 15 to 20 grams per tablespoon serving. That is several teaspoons of sugar in this jam that is touted to be healthy. It has all fruit or natural, but it really is just a sugar bomb. There are, however, jams out on the market that are made from primarily fruit. Again, flip over the jar, look at the back, make sure there's not an excessive amount of added sugar. And also watch your serving in your portion side of jams and jellies in general. Number two, flavored yogurt. Now yogurt is actually really good for you, especially Greek yogurt because it is packed with protein. But a lot of the flavors in yogurt come from artificial sources. And a lot of those flavored yogurts have a lot of added sugar. There are some really great brands out there that limit the amount of sugar like Too Good Yogurt or Chobani Zero Sugar or any of the lighter Greek yogurts. If you really want to control what's in your yogurt, you can simply make a flavored yogurt at home. Take a plain whole milk or non-fat Greek yogurt, add in some fruit, add in your favorite sweetener, maybe it's a little bit of honey or agave or sugar substitute, and you can make your own flavored yogurt at home. We just want to watch all of that added sugar, which makes it an unhealthier source of carbohydrates. Number three is probably not going to be much of a surprise, and this is going to be pastries. All of those delicious muffins and scones and cookies and cinnamon rolls at your local bakery are just loaded with sugar. And this is a type of carbohydrate that is immediately going to spike your blood sugar. It can cause a lot of insulin related issues. These are the things that lead to things like prediabetes and diabetes. Now, like I said, you can still eat these things. You just want to eat them a lot less of the time. We want to focus on healthy carbohydrates the majority of the time. And another really good key takeaway or key point with pastries, split it with a friend. You don't need to eat the whole giant cookie. Maybe you eat half of it or you put the other half away for another day. It's all about being mindful of how much you're consuming and your portion sizes, pastries included. Number four, this is a really easy carb to make a swap and that is white bread. White bread has zero nutritional value. In fact, all of the nutrition has been stripped from, from the bread to make it a white bread. You can still eat bread. I eat bread every day, sometimes several times a day. It's just choosing a healthier bread. Again, look for one that has fiber, especially number one fiber, and number two, if you can get in a few grams of protein per slice, even better. My recommendation is sprouted breads. Sprouted breads are some of the healthiest breads on the planet. And again, watch the added sugar. You can pick up a bread and flip it over and it has five, six, seven grams of added sugar where the one next to it, maybe in from the same brand, might only have one gram of sugar. It's watching those added sugars in bread, making sure it's not white and it has some fiber. Number five, 
flour tortillas. This is similar to white bread. There is zero nutritional value in a flour tortilla. Now there's a lot of low carb tortillas out there. I want to, you to remember that low carb tortillas are low in net carbs, not total carbs. And typically we are looking at total carbs when we're looking at our carbs for the day, not net carbs. However, some of these low carb tortillas have a lot of fiber in them and even some protein. So they're a much better choice than just a traditional flour tortilla. You're going to save carbs, a lot of calories, and you're going to get in some fiber and some protein. So you can still have flour tortillas. You can still have those carbohydrates, just choose healthier options. Number six are fruit snacks. Now the word fruit in the title can be really deceiving because most of these fruit snacks have zero fruit in them. They're basically glorified candy. And we put these in our lunch and our kids' lunch thinking that we're making a healthier choice when in reality, again, it's just a gummy candy. There are some healthy fruit snacks on the market. There's a brand called Soli that makes fruit snacks basically derived from fruit. This is a better option for your kids. And let me tell you, they're absolutely delicious. Same goes with all the other foods we've mentioned. Look at all of the added sugar. And if it's made with fruit juice, fruit juice is typically a lot of sugar as well. So don't let any of these buzzwords make you choose the unhealthier option for a snack. Check out Soli gummies and check out Soli fruit snacks and just look at the nutrition label of the fruit snacks that you're choosing. And maybe omitting these from your kid's lunch is a better option. Number seven is sweetened cereal. So all those good sugary cereals on the market are just that, sugary cereals. And one of the worst things we can do for our health and even more for our weight loss is to start our day off with sugar. A sugary item, a donut, sugary cereal, Pop-Tarts, those are the worst things we can start our day off with because we're just spiking our blood sugar right out of the gate and none of these things have any protein in them. Skip the sweetened sugary cereals and choose a healthier option. If you're a cereal eater, eat cereal. Just find one that has some fiber, some protein, and way less sugar. There are some really good healthy options for cereals on the market. Kashi makes some really good cereals. Fiber One makes a honey oat cereal that has quite a bit of fiber in it. Even mini wheats, not frosted mini wheats, but mini wheats can give you a good punch of fiber. Pay special attention to that nutrition label and those ingredients. Number eight is probably going to be fairly obvious as well, and this is candy, any candy, gummy candy, sugary candy, chocolate, dark chocolate, all of these are considered to be candy. Now, like all foods, there are healthier options. Dark chocolate, if you need a sweet treat, is going to be a much healthier option than a bag of gummy bears. But all candy has a lot of added sugar. That's what makes it good. And that's what makes it candy. So if you are going to eat candy, which you can certainly do that, you just need to be really mindful of how much you're eating. Those bags of gummy bears at the gas station have anywhere from four to six servings. Don't eat the whole bag, just eat a serving. One of the tricks that I've done throughout my 140 pound weight loss with things like candy, I am very, very much a sweets eater. I have dessert every day. I have a sweet treat every single day. I watch my portion. So if I were to buy that bag of gummy bears at a gas station, I would bring it home and immediately portion it out into little containers with one portion of gummy bears. Then I grab my container, I eat it, and I move on. I don't take the whole bag of gummy bears because that's where we get into trouble. We just keep putting gummy bears in our mouth without realizing that we're eating four to six servings and hundreds upon hundreds of calories. If you need to watch your sugar, you may need to make even more modifications to the candy that you're choosing. But candy kind of falls in that 20% of fun carbohydrates that you can certainly eat and still lose weight. Number nine is ice cream. And of course, this is another one of those things that there are a lot of substitutions and swaps out there that are better alternatives. I really like ice cream, but what happens with ice cream is there's fat and sugar. So it's really kind of a double dip of high calorie nutri lack of nutrient food. Now you can still eat ice cream, but you have to be again, very mindful of your serving. Those little pints of Ben and Jerry's, that's four servings, not one. And I don't know about you, but I can certainly eat that whole pint in one sitting. So with ice cream, we want to look for healthier options. Look for less added sugar. Maybe a light ice cream would be a better option or a Greek yogurt or a yogurt-based ice cream. Yasso bars are incredible and they are a much healthier option than that pint of Ben and Jerry's. Again, you can still eat the Ben and Jerry's, just one serving, not four. Number 10, sweetened 
coffee, especially this time of year when it is pumpkin spice bliss. Now, don't get me wrong, I love a good pumpkin anything, but these sweetened sugary coffees can be as many calories as one meal or two meals in a day. I recently saw a reel on TikTok from Bobby with Flav City about the pumpkin spice latte at Dunkin'. Did you know that there's over 900 calories in that and over 60 grams of sugar, which is the same as 17 glazed Dunkin' Donuts. By having that one sugary beverage every day, you've consumed almost a thousand calories, lots of sugar, lots of carbohydrates. If I remember right, it was like 150 or 160 grams of carbs, which is more than most people eat in an entire day. Those sugary drinks will help, will not only give you a ton of added sugar, but will stunt your weight loss. Don't drink your calories. Be very mindful of drinking your calories. Now, if you wanna treat yourself to a pumpkin spice latte here and there, make a better, choose a better option. Try to choose one that has a little less sugar. Go light on the flavoring. Choose a non-fat or low-fat or milk alternative rather than whole milk. Make those modifications. You can still have your favorite sweetened beverages. Just make sure it's not every single day. That maybe you treat yourself once a week or every couple of weeks and you try to reduce the amount of calories and sugar in those beverages. Number 11 is syrup, specifically pancake syrup. This is literally liquid sugar. There is nothing healthy about syrup. I know for me, whenever I go out for breakfast and I get something that requires syrup, I always ask for sugar-free because it is just literally liquid sugar and liquid calories. There is a lot of calories in syrup, hundreds, hundreds in a couple of tablespoons. So either go light, light, light on the regular syrup, very light, so you're not consuming those liquid calories and that liquid sugar or opt for a lower sugar option. There's a lot of lower sugar, sugar-free syrup options out there that are really good. My favorite sugar-free syrup that has the best ingredients, meaning there's no caramel coloring in there because caramel coloring is a carcinogen and I try to avoid it, is Lakanto. Lakanto makes a really good sugar-free maple syrup. They even have a cinnamon one, which is a 10 out of 10 out of 10. I actually have a 15% off discount code for Lakanto. I'll link it down below for you. Check out their syrup and actually all of their sugar substitutes are fantastic. They're my all time favorites. They're my go-tos, but skip the regular sugary loaded syrup. Number 12, canned fruit. We might be thinking, oh, we're making such a good choice by choosing this can of pears or this can of mandarin oranges or this can of peaches. That liquid with your healthy fruit is sugar. It's just a sugary, simple syrup. So when you're choosing canned fruit, you can eat canned fruit. I eat canned fruit all the time. You want to make sure that you're choosing a no sugar or a low sugar option. If it says that it's canned in heavy syrup, skip it. You want to look for fruit canned in water or again, fruit that has no added sugar. Canned fruit, those little fruit cups, they're convenient, they're delicious, you can still eat them. Just choose the ones with a lot less sugar. And number 13 kind of goes back to fruit snacks and that is juice. There are healthy juices out there, but really juice is something that you should really watch when it comes to losing weight. Again, juice is literally sugar. It's not like they took a fresh fruit and squeezed it and put it into a bottle. That would be an ideal juice. And really ideally you should be making your own juice at home. Fresh squeeze some orange juice, oranges for an orange juice, skip the ones in the bottle at the supermarket, you would be shocked at how much added sugar is in there. There's no fiber. And remember, fruit has fiber. That's what makes fruit such a great sweet treat option is because it has fiber. So it doesn't spike your blood sugar like fruit juice does. You're better off eating fruit in its whole form. And if you are going to consume juice, watch the sugar or make it at home. There's endless juicers out on the market and you can literally take an orange and squeeze it into a glass and have a much better, healthier, less sugar, less unhealthy carb juice. So those are the 13 unhealthiest carbohydrates and why. What I want to point out about this list is that two things. Number one, you can still have all of these things just in moderation, watching your portion size, making sure that they don't make up a big portion of the carbs that you're consuming. Again, 80% healthy carbs, 20% these fun carbs. And point number two is a lot of these items on the list have healthier options, healthier substitutions. You can still eat your favorite foods, just find a healthier version of them. That's really going to help you with your weight loss and help you consume 80% healthy carbs, 20% fun carbs. Let us know down below what are some of your favorite less healthy carb substitutions. And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a big, huge thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not. Turn your bell on because I upload new videos every Tuesday 
and Thursday. Don't forget to check out the description box for personalized macros and calories. Highly, highly recommend. Again, this is how I've lost and maintained 140 pounds, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching if you would like to talk with me directly. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.